14 step listing presentation. Let's review. Step number one, phone interview. You're gonna call them the day before the appointment in order to ask questions to prepare for the appointment. That's script. Uh, step number two, prepare your CMA and your supply and demand analysis. You're pulling all the properties that have sold in the last six months and everything that is currently for sale. Then you're going to determine how many homes are currently for sale in different price ranges. Sorry guys, while I finish getting dressed. How many are selling every 30 days and what the supply of inventory is. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Uh, step number three, confirm the appointment. You're calling the day of the appointment. Good morning, Bill. John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, confirming our appointment for later today at 4 p.m. Super excited to meet with you. Hey, by the way, when I come out today at 4 o'clock, are you going to be ready to list your home? Bill says, yes. My response is, awesome. Bill says, no. My response is, awesome. I'll see you at 4 o'clock. Just finding out if they're ready. Step number four, get on the listing channel. That's all about mindset. Step number five, Kodak moment. That's your first impression at the front door. Step number six, tour the home. You're gonna set your things down at the kitchen table, then you're gonna ask the seller to take you on a tour. You're gonna to let them know that you're gonna ask lots of questions. You're gonna take lots of notes because this is the information you're gonna to use to help them sell their home. Script. Step number seven, begin the conversation. We're sitting at the kitchen table. Dee, it is such an honor to be here today. A privilege anytime I have an opportunity to talk to a potential seller about the Deeds team representing them in the sale of their home. Before I get started, I'd like to start by sharing my mission statement. Would that be okay? One of three things are gonna happen today. Either number one, you'll understand and appreciate the benefits that I have to offer and you'll hire me, which is awesome. The second thing that may happen is you may not hire me, and quite honestly, that's not so awesome. And then the third thing that occasionally happens is I sometimes choose not to represent the seller. Now, the reason I would choose not to represent someone is if I felt they had a goal or an expectation that I cannot meet or exceed, I would rather turn the opportunity down today than let you down six months from now. Okay. Step number eight, needs analysis. In order for me to know if I can meet your goals and exceed your expectations, Eddie, I just need to ask you a couple of questions. Would that be okay? On a scale of one to 10, with one being not so great and 10 being awesome, what's one thing that needs to happen in the sale of your home? Now, Eddie says, sell my home quick. So I'm gonna write, sell my home quick. I'm taking notes. And Eddie, I know what quick looks like to me. What does it mean to you? What does that look like? I'm going three deep on every answer he gives me in order to find true motivation. Step number nine, prioritize needs. If we can nail one of these goals and barely miss the other two, what's the most important goal? Then what's the second most important goal? Cool. Step number 10, trial close. Kevin, if I could demonstrate today that I'm the right agent for the job, embedded command, script, in order to get these goals accomplished, would you hire me today? Kevin says, yes, awesome, let's get started. Kevin says, I don't know, awesome, let's get started. All right, step number 11, satisfy needs and expectations. This is your marketing plan, this is what you're gonna do in order to get their home sold, in order to meet their goals, and in order to exceed their expectations. Step number 12, review CMA. All right, let's pick up there and we're gonna move into supply and demand analysis today and we're gonna dive deep on this. Give me one second. All right, share screen. Let's see, am I gonna be able to do this? Cool, I can. Way too many windows open up here. There we go. All right, so yesterday we looked at each of these properties in detail. I shared with you that our subject property was 3,600 foot square foot. It was four bedrooms, four baths. And we're looking at each of the properties that we have pulled that have sold in the last six months in Eagle Trace. It doesn't mean we're gonna use all six properties. And a perfect example is 1990 Northwest 127th Terrace. We drop down to description of the property and we can see that it's three bedrooms, two and a half baths, so that's smaller than your home. 
this is script, this is a role play, and it's 1,800 square foot. So this property is not comparable. We're not going to look at it. And all I would do is just put an X on that sheet of paper and put it off to the side because we're not using that. All right, cool. I'm going to move on to the next shared screen. There we go. Uh, we did this yesterday where we broke down our subject property and Then we looked at the comparables that we're going to use to determine value. So the subject property has 3,800 square foot, four bedrooms, four baths, has a pool, backs to another home. It was built in 1992, updated kitchen in 2017 with granite, maple cabinets, travertine floors, and stainless steel appliances, and new paper pool patio and driveway. We also have new hurricane impact windows in 2019. And then we looked at each of our comparables. Now, at the bottom of this report, I itemized everything. So comparable number one sold for 152 a square foot. Comparable number two, 176 a square foot. And comparable number three was 164 a square foot. And remember, we adjusted that because it back to the golf course. So we actually adjusted the price down by $30,000. When making adjustments, you make adjustments to the properties that sold, not to the comparable home. Go ahead, Alex. Oh, I thought your hand was up. Okay, so we also determined yesterday that at the high range, our subject property would sell for $668,800. At the low, it would sell for $583,200. Now, I'm gonna stop share, screen share and we're gonna to go to another screen share and just say a prayer for me that this works. Nope, don't want that, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Enable everybody to share so that I can share from my iPad, cool. All right, here we go. Yes. You should see a white screen, yes? Yes. Oh my goodness. It's working. Okay, so markets go up, they flatten, and markets go down. Yes or yes? Yes. 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 Now, if we are in a zero to 60 day market, we're in a hot market, yes? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So we can look at this property and say, okay, well, the high based on the previous sales is $668,800. And we know that we have less than 60 days of inventory. We could actually price this property aggressively and it'll still sell because values are going up. So if the high is 668, and I'm drawing this at the table and having this conversation with them, guys, just like I'm having a conversation with you. 668,800, we could actually price the property as high as 688,064. And we're still going to attract the buyer. We still have a really good chance of getting your price. Is this making sense, guys? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now what if we're not in a market that's zero to 60 days. What if we're in Parkland and this is a million dollar home and we're in a market that is 120 days plus? Where are we on this graph? Are we here or A or B? We're on B. the B side. B. Now, if we didn't know this, and we just assumed, because the media is tell us, telling us and everybody else is telling us that we're in a hot market, prices are going up, blah, 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 and we listed the property at $688,000, what have we done? Overpriced. Not anticipated the market. Went fishing with our bait out of water. 
there you go. <laughs> ah, we went fishing with our bait out of water, exactly what mm -hmm. we did. So actually what you wanna do in this market is you wanna price it 3% below current market value. In other words, if the market says the last home that sold that's comparable based on the high end, and I'm looking at the high end because our property is really updated, it's absolutely beautiful, and we know that it's going to attract top dollar. So the last property that sold in a seller's market creates a new floor, meaning the next home is going to sell for more money. In a buyer's market, it creates a new ceiling, which means the next home that's going to sell is going to sell for less money. And if the current market value today is 668,800 based on the last property that sold, I actually want to price 3% below that because I'm pricing where the market is going and I'm pricing ahead of the market. Now the seller is going to say, well, I'm giving my home away. And, and my response to that is going to be maybe. However, if values are dropping by 1%, a month and 1% of 668 thousand dollars rounded up to seven thousand dollars in three months your price has dropped by twenty one thousand dollars so three months from now your home is actually worth less than six hundred and forty eight thousand dollars six months from now it's worth $42,000 less. So if you sold your home $20,000 below market value six months from now, have you lost money? No, you haven't. Six months from now, you're in Atlanta, Georgia with your family. I'm using emotion now. You're not still in your house. And if you would have stayed, you would have lost $42,000. So would you rather sell your home for 648,000 script? Would you rather sell your home for 648,000 in the next 30 days? Or 600,000 six months from now? If we had a crystal ball script sitting on the table and we knew that your home was gonna sell for 640, just make it 640. 640,000, would you rather sell for 640 in the next 30 days or 640 six months from now? Or maybe less than 640 six months from now? Obviously the next 30 days if I have there to get to you. Georgia. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, is this making sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, then I'm gonna move on. Now, well, this is fun. Hold on. I feel like I'm back in kindergarten. I don't want to go to the next page. I just want to erase. Works better that way. Okay. Six hundred to six fifty. Six fifty to seven hundred. A is active listings in that price range within a three mile radius of your subject property. That's your competition. That's who you're competing against. Sellers think they're only competing against homes in their neighborhood. Ha! <laughs> That's thinking, no, a buyer's not going to go outside my neighborhood to look for a home. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that you love your neighborhood, but I promise you buyers are looking at other neighborhoods as well. Now, A, $600,000 to $650,000, we have 18 homes for sale. Cool. That's the inventory. And I'm just looking at single family homes. I don't care if they're comparable or not. I'm just looking to see what is available in that price range because that's my competition. B is properties that have sold in the last six months. And we're gonna make that thirty-six. 
C is B divided by six, which equals six homes are selling every 30 days. D is A divided by C. In other words, active listings divided by the number of homes that are selling every 30 days. So 18 divided by six equals 90 days. Now, 650 to $700,000. A is also 18 active listings. B, on the other hand, is also 18 properties that have sold in the last six months. C is three homes are selling every 30 days. D is six months. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, where do you have a better chance of selling your home? 600 to 650 or 650 to 700? Eight, 650. 600 to 650. Now, where do you have a better chance of selling your home? 600 to 650. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Eddie, where should we price your home? Around 640, 645. Okay. 650. Mm -hmm. Cool. I agree. I think 645 is a great price. You ready to get started? Absolutely. Okay. Now, what if, by the way, that's a close. He just agreed to hire me, right? Say right. Yes. Yes. That's a close. You guys think cl to, to close should be something difficult. A close is nothing more than the natural conclusion to an effective presentation. That's all it is. The natural conclusion to an effective presentation is your close. So I agree, 645 is the right price. Are you ready to get started? That's my close. Now, what if Eddie said, you know, I get that, John, but I still want 650. Cool, can I share with you why that concerns me? Mm -hmm. Say yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> all right. was all right all right so Eddie here's what happens when we put a home on the market if this line indicates money and this is time we have zero days 30 days 60 days 90 days 120 days and 180 days on the market if we priced your home at 670 because a buyer could always make an offer or we could always lower the price later. By the way, seller script, they go to school too. And those are the two scripts that they know they don't know any more scripts. That's it. The good news is you know more scripts. So we priced it at 670 because a buyer can always make an offer or we could always lower the price. And the market is telling us script. The market is telling us that the right list price is 645. Mm -hmm. Here's what concerns me. From day zero to day 30, the number of people who are looking at your home is going to climb and then it's going to peak and then it's gonna to plateau and it's gonna to start to fall off and somewhere around 180 days on the market, the next door neighbor doesn't even know your home is for sale anymore. In other words, nobody's paying attention. And what typically happens, Eddie, is when a seller doesn't get an offer and their home hasn't sold, remember guys, there's six months worth of inventory on this home. We're not talking a market where there's less than 60 days. What typically happens is a seller will come to me and say, okay, John, you were right. Go ahead and lower the price to 645. The problem is we missed, missed the, the market. market. We missed the best time to sell this house. Now, what happens next? is a buyer comes along 120 days out and they absolutely love your home. 
The first question they're gonna ask is how long has it been on the market? The answer is gonna be 120 days. The next thing they're gonna say is what's wrong with it? And their agent's gonna say nothing, it's a great property. The next thing they're gonna say is can I get a deal? Now, question for you guys. Is your negotiating position stronger as a seller at 30 days or stronger at 120 days? 30 days. 30 days. 30. Yeah. Now it's 120 days out. You're still here in Coral Springs. You're fan, you're, or you left to go to, Coral, to Atlanta to start your new job. You left your family and children behind while your home was being sold. You're paying for two different properties. The value of your home is dropping. You have carrying costs that you're paying and now you're more motivated and the buyer comes in and they offer 620 and because now you're desperate now you have to sell your home you go ahead and accept six hundred and twenty thousand dollars sold congratulations you're moving to atlanta and you lost $25,000 trying to make an extra $25,000. And it took you 90 days to do that. If your holding cost is $4,000 per month, that's another $36,000 that you lost trying to make an additional $25,000. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'd rather see you sell your home for 645,000 in 30 days than 620,000 in 120 days and pay an additional $36,000 not to sell your home. So what should we do? So John? Yep. Well, I have a habit of trying to find holes in some of your stories. This is so spot on. You can't argue this. You really can't because it, it's the truth. It makes sense, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's more than makes sense. It's the truth. Yeah. And this is what makes you a market expert, guys. This is when you become the local economist of choice. This is when you become a professional and you're not winging it. This is when you're sitting at the kitchen table and the seller is going, holy cow, this person knows what they're talking about. Let me go back to the three things that I shared with you before that every seller is asking themselves when they meet with a real estate agent. Do you care about me? Can I trust you? Do you know what you're doing? So based on the conversation I just had with you, do you believe that I care about you? Yes. yes. Yeah. Can you trust me? Yes. Yep. Does it sound like I know what I'm doing? Absolutely. Yeah. Would you want to hire me? Yeah. Well, you guys, didn't jump to, you guys didn't jump to that one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to sound a little bit cocky, and I apologize. But if I'm, if I'm competing for a listing with somebody who doesn't know how to do this, what's the odds of that person getting the listing? Slim to none. Slim yeah. to none. Mm -hmm. Slim to none. Yeah. Are all real estate agents created equal? No. No. All right, talk to me. We've got four minutes. Ahas, questions. Yeah, I have a question. Danielle, go. So um, I saw that you priced the home at 645. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember previously um, in price discussions, uh, we talked about fishing in both ponds. So why not 650? Good question. Because there's six months worth of inventory, which means there's 36 properties for sale, for example, and mm -hmm. six are selling every 30 days. And a buyer has 36 homes to choose from, and mm -hmm. five out five thousand dollars may cause them not to make an offer on your home. Five thousand dollars may cause them to make an offer on another property over your home. Mm. Okay. And you wouldn't even know that you could have got an offer for 645, you were at 650, and you don't know that they made an offer on another property that was priced just a little bit better than yours, and you missed an opportunity and you don't even know about it. 
When you're in less than 90 days of inventory, Danielle, absolutely put it right there on 650 and go fishing in two ponds. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Yep. John? Yes. But in this case, it all, you also proved that, uh, so to speak, not, not all ponds are equal because in the first pond, 600, 650, it's basically a seller's market, 650, 700, it's a buyer's market. In you some got ways. it, Michael. You got it, Michael. So when, a, when the next time somebody asks you, how's the market, I don't want you to start talking about how great the market is. Mm -hmm. What I want you to say is it depends. We're in a seller's market and we're in a buyer's market. It depends on location and it depends on price. Okay. And by the way, why do you ask? Guys, when people are asking you, how's the market? And you just answer the question and you don't turn that into an opportunity. Stop yeah. that. All right. John, yes. One more. I got a question. Could you explain to everybody why in your listings you're suggesting $649 $600,049 or $59? $649,000? Well, you said so $650,049. 650049. Oh, I didn't do that on purpose, but I understand the agents that do. When I was on the Gary and Nikki team, we ended all of our listings in 867. And that was just a way of identifying a listing as a Gary and Nikki team listing. They all ended in 867. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, yeah. it makes it stand 20%. out from other listings. Right. It makes it stand out. You're right about that, too. So $649,867. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Who's next? <clears throat> so, John, it's Dave. Um, I have a listing 62 days on the market, and it seems like the market has really calm down, not getting hardly any calls. We did a price drop about 30 days ago of 10 grand. So my seller wants to be out at 325. We have it listed right now at 332. So I'm afraid of doing another price drop because we're just getting too close to where they want to. And it's not like people are saying it's overpriced or anything, but I guess I need to go into that 325 price zone, like 300 to 325, because I'm sitting yeah. above it. Yeah, uh, I would say that's probably right. And I would suggest you do a price uh, supply and demand analysis uh, yeah. from three to 325, and then from 325 to 350. And where do you have the chance of being the shining star? Because remember, when you price a home, you're also choosing who you compete against. So in your example, your seller is either competing against other homes that are priced from three to 325 or from 325 to 350. And it may be they're just competing against better competition. Yeah. Nobody's gonna say the home's overpriced. Very few people are, and I shouldn't say that. Very few people right. are gonna say the home is overpriced, but what does no offers mean? Overpriced. So overpriced. Is there anything that's wrong with the house condition wise that would cause it not to sell? Location wise, does it back up to a nuclear waste facility? Nope. <laughs> it has stairs, which in this case, in the condo market, you know, it's people don't like stairs. Okay. I sold two right down the street without stairs. There you go. Right? That might be it. That might be it. And the only way to overcome that is price. Yep. You have to have tough conversations, guys. You've had it kind of easy, and don't take that wrong. You guys are gonna get mad at me. <laughs> You've had it kind of easy because we've been in a great market. It's gonna get tough. You have to get really good at having tough conversations. Okay, thanks. Hey, John, it's David. David, talk to me. My big aha is that we have to prepare and practice for every listing appointment, like we're going against John Beats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, David, I like that. So yeah. if we go into every appointment like that, we'll guarantee if we speak like that, we will get the listing. There you go, David. Time on task over time equals mastery. You want the, and here's what you said without and taking me out of the equation. 
you want to be able to master your listing presentation at the highest level possible, 100%, mm -hmm. right? Uh, to Vicki's question, yes, this would be the time that I would show them a seller's net sheet if I show a seller's net sheet. Not everybody does. That's another coaching call and a completely different conversation. I'm not saying you were wrong for asking the question. I'm just answering your question. Yes, this is when I would show them a seller's net sheet. Yes, just make sure, yeah, I really want to say this because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Just make sure that if you're showing a seller's net sheet that you're putting on their estimated, like huge highlighted so that they don't hold you to that later on if the taxes were off or something caused it to be different. All right. Unconscious competence. Nine, yes, unconscious competence. There you go. 903, one more and we're out. Okay, we're just out. <laughs> it's it's 903. Time to get on the time to get on the phone. Lead generate 20 contacts, not 19, not 18. When you bake a cake with 98% of the ingredients, the cake still sucks. You have to have 100% of the ingredients. Your, your recipe is 20 contacts a day. That's 20 conversations focused on getting an appointment, getting a referral, or adding somebody to your database. Make sure you add one person to your database every single day. Use smart plans. Holy cow. Use smart plans. Follow up, follow up, follow up forever. Reject rejection. No is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. Never stop making a call. Even if you hear, I'm never going to hire you. Awesome. Talk to you next week. Write five handwritten personal notes today. Make it a great day. Thanks, John. Thank you, John.